Hello, this is Wes Fryer, and I'd like to share a quick story about a project that I helped my 8th grade daughter do using Google Maps Engine to create a geo map. And if you're not familiar with a geo map, that is one of the products in the mapping media to the curriculum framework that I've been working on. You can find it at maps.playingwithmedia.com, and when you click the link to geo map, you'll be able to link to this example and a bunch of other items and resources related to geo maps. So um, if you've been following Google Maps for a while, you may know that when you go to maps.google.com, it's changed quite a bit recently. Uh, this is being recorded in uh, March of 2014. When you click on My Custom Maps, you're going to see maps that you've created, and you can say See All My Custom Maps, and it is going to show maps that you have created with Google Map Engine, or Maps Engine, I guess is what it's really called. And then you can also see the classic My Maps, which are the ones that you may have created previously with Google Maps. Well, Google Maps Engine is a much more powerful tool in many ways because it allows you to see data in layers and have layers on your maps and it also allows you to connect your map to a Google spreadsheet and to bring that data in. So the story here is that my eighth grade daughter Sarah was, had read this book Hiroshima by John Harrisey, that's how you say his name, and she needed to do a project related to it for her English class and she asked me, Dad, what can we do about Hiroshima? And one of the things I know about World War II was that there were there were tremendously high casualty rates in the island battles that led up to the dropping of the atomic bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And so I asked Sarah if she knew about that, and she didn't. So the first step was I had her do a little research, and we went online, and she created this spreadsheet, and I helped her get this formatted. But basically, um, we have different columns for the battles, the starting and ending dates, the location of where the battle took place, and then we listed the U.S. killed and the Japanese killed. Now, the casualty numbers uh, were different than the numbers uh, estimated killed. And then we also found the latitude and longitude, and that's really important to get you know those precise locations. Uh, as I recall, we just went to Google and we said, convert to latitude and longitude, and we'll see if the link comes up here. There were there were several different sites that we it'll come up and and we use one of these. I don't remember which one precisely um, to be able to you know get the the latitude and longitude. But we made this Google spreadsheet and then we brought it into Google Map Engine. And so this is what her final project looked like. And when you click on one of these, like when we click on Saipan it will actually pop up a link um, to, to that location and you can see the data that goes with that location. So you can see starting date, ending day, location, and then you see the numbers of US and Japanese that were killed. So, you know, as an example, when you look at the Battle of Okinawa, not a lot of people realize there were 12,500 US soldiers killed. There were over 110,000 estimated Japanese that were killed. And, um, you know, and then obviously with the dropping of the atomic bombs, uh, you know, I guess we should do Hiroshima first. Hiroshima estimated 80,000, Nagasaki estimated 246,000. So um, here's how you do that in Google Map Engine really quick. You're going to click the link that says Create a New Map. And you can search for places and you can drop place marks, but you can also um, choose to import data and if you click the import link it's going to let you drag a comma separated file or an Excel file here or you can go into your Google Drive and you can select Google Drive and if I start to type Hiroshima there's the Hiroshima project map layer and so it's going to request access to that. You're going to have to click OK if you haven't agreed. And then you choose, first of all, the columns that will position your place marks. So that's where you need latitude and longitude. And then you say continue. And then you're going to pick the column to use as the title. And we'll just use the name of the battle. And then everything else is going to show up in the pop-up. So I click finish. It's going to go ahead and import all of those latitude and longitude locations. It's going to put just, I think, a generic red place mark on them. You can customize that later if you want. 
and there they are. There are those locations. And so uh, really the only other thing we did was change the title of the map. But that is an example of how you can create a geo map using Google Maps Engine Lite, which is free. And again, if you'd like to get more information about Geo Maps, you'd like to see um, apps for iOS or iPad iPad devices, and you know, just get other ideas about Geo Maps. I encourage you to visit Mapping Media to the Common Core, which I very well may be renaming Mapping Media to the Curriculum by the time you see this. Uh, but that same website, maps.playingwithmedia.com, will get you there. And I hope this is helpful. And if you've got any feedback, I would love to hear from you. You can send me a tweet at at WFryer, or you can Google my name, Wes Fryer, and find the contact link for me and find some other ways to get in touch with me. Thanks a lot, and enjoy creating geomaps, not only by yourself, but also, hopefully, with your students.